Hi guys. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to go about actually configuring remote desktop and maybe explain a little bit of what it actually is. So first of all, this tool called remote desktop is installed on your computer by default, at least if you've got the right version of operating system. So if you don't have it, it's simply a matter of you've got the wrong version of Windows, you know, and I'm not talking about server or Windows 10 specifically per se. It's the wrong version of Windows 10, if we're talking Windows 10 here, or the wrong version of Windows 8, or the wrong version of Windows 7. So, yeah, just go and check if you've got the right version. Normally, just a higher ranking version that actually has this feature available. So, first of all, what is remote desktop? So, where you can find it is, I don't know if mine's going to pop up here, but you can go around and search for it. There we go, there's my remote desktop. So this is a Microsoft tool that's built into both the client and the server operating system, so assuming you've got the right version like we've just established. And it essentially allows you to connect to other machines on your network. Now by default, that's the keyword here, default. By default, this little nifty program only works if you're on the same network. So I've got to be plugged into the same physical network via network cables, or I've got to be connected to the same Wi-Fi, you know, but generally you've got to be in the same building. It's not restricted to just that. It's not limited to just that. You can get this to work very long range. You know, I can go and remote desktop from home to the office if I want to. But it involves, you know, setting up additional things like a VPN connection, if you know what a VPN connection is. Essentially, a VPN connection is kind of like digitally teleporting yourself to the office, you know, if, if you're going to be doing it to the office. So physically, you're sitting at home, but logically, it's as if you're sitting at the office. So that's pretty much what a VPN connection is. Uh, more on that in a VPN video once that comes out. So this remote desktop connection for the default settings only allows you to connect within your organization. So from the machine that you are connecting from, you just need to type in the other machine's name or its IP address, if you know what that is. So if I were to go and make up an IP address here, I'm just making this up, I'm spitballing here. That could have been the other machine's IP address. That could be a server, that could be a client computer, that really doesn't matter. Uh, or I can type in the other machine's name. So if that other computer has a name of sorts, such as that, you could type that in and also connect to that machine, assuming you're on the same network. Something else you need to keep in mind here is, once again, the one you're connecting from, not much needs to be configured. You just need to make sure you've got remote desktop. The one you're connecting to, then you need to actually make sure the remote desktop is turned on, and you need to make sure that it's allowed for the firewall on that machine. So at the moment, I've been showing it from, from the machine's perspective if I was going to be connecting from this one. But if I were to go and pretend that this machine that we are looking at right now is the one that I would be connecting to, um, you would have to go and double check your system properties. I'm doing this on a server, but it doesn't matter. It's exactly the same way on a server or a client. Just go check your system properties here. I just went and installed the server operating system just now a few moments ago. There we go. So I'm going to go here to remote settings. You might see additional options here depending on if you're doing this on a server or a client operating system. Go to remote settings. And by default, that is what you're going to see. It's going to say don't allow remote connections to this computer. That's the default setting. You're going to have to go and click on allow remote connections to this machine. That's the option you need to have for people to be able to connect to this machine. It's turned off your own, your own safety, I think. Um, I'm going to take a gander here and make a guess and say Microsoft probably did that to protect people, you know, people that's not necessarily tech savvy. Uh, we're not saying they're dumb or anything. It could be that they are lawyers, maybe they're marketing people, they're doctors, they're experts in their respective fields, and they're not tech savvy like you or me, maybe. So they will not know that, hey, I should probably go and turn this off. Otherwise, people are going to hack me or take advantage of my computer. So I think Microsoft probably turned that off by default as a security precaution, which is actually very nice. So if you're not going to be using it, turn it off. All right, so that's the first thing you need to do. It's not the only thing you need to go and do. I don't know if mine's going to actually go through. Secondly, I need to go and allow this little bugger for the firewall. So let me go on a search for firewall on this machine. There we go. Firewall. Yeah, so it's a feature we want to allow. So I'm going to go to the top left hand side here where it says allow an app or a feature for the Windows Defender firewall. It might just say firewall depending on what version of Windows 10 you're running or server. All right, so I see two rows here where it's, it's private and public. You may or may not see a third row here. It says domain depending on if you're doing this on a work machine that's been joined to a domain, if you know what a domain is. All right, so if it doesn't show you the option to go and click on these blocks like mine, you might just have to go click on the option here at the top where it says change settings. As soon as you click on that, it allows you to actually go and click on the little blocks here. So you scroll down all the way till you find the letter R for remote desktop. Where is it? There we go. 
So I can see mine has already been allowed. So by default, this is normally not allowed. It look, normally looks like something like that. So you're gonna have to go and click on, you know, the little block there, remote desktop. Make sure you tick it for all the networks. Um, that's generally the, the way people go. If you don't want it to be available for all networks, just go and untick the networks you don't want it for. Once you've done that, remote desktop should work for the most part and you'll be able to connect to this specific machine using its name or its IP address. By default, like I said, you've got to be on the same network. Something else you need to be aware of is by default, only one machine connect, can connect to one other machine. And if a second machine were to go and connect, it's going to kick off the other person. At least that's the default way around it. Uh, also, if I was active on this machine that we're looking at right now, and someone were to go and remote desktop to this machine, it's going to basically kick me off, so to speak. To the logon screen pretty much where you type in your windows password it's going to more or less kick me off to there and it's going to allow that person to well control my machine is what's going to happen now if i were to log back in which i can it's going to kick that person off again and vice versa so we're going to basically kick one another off zigzag zigzag like so um if you would like to have a situation this is not actually part of this video but if you'd like to have a situation where more than one person can connect to the same machine at the same time you know multiple sessions effectively that can, for the most part, only be done on a server. Now, I coincidentally do have a server here. I'm not going to be doing that in this video. Uh, but if you'd like to do that, that generally involves additional licensing then. And you're going to need what we call CALs, CALs, Client Access Licenses. So, yeah, generally, if you need more than one machine to be connected at the same time to something like a server, you're going to need licensing. If you would just like to connect one machine at a time to a server or a client machine, you don't necessarily need a license. You can just go ahead and do it for free one at a time it's going to kick the host off if there is a host on at that point in time if you would like to know more about this please let me know drop me a comment if you'd like to see a video about something else maybe vpn maybe about the server side or how to go and set up this whole remote desktop uh, terminal scenario basically on the server side drop me a comment let me know otherwise i won't know how to go make a video what i'm what i need to go make a video on basically um, if you find this useful leave me a like subscribe please it also helps me as well Something else you guys can go make use of, not everybody actually makes use of this, is you can go and pull resources through with you. Now, I think the reason why people don't use this is because normally when you go and remote connect somewhere, it's just temporary, it's going to be quick. Uh, but what you can go and do is if you're going to be doing this a lot, or if you're going to be using this like in a terminal scenario where a lot of people are connecting at the same time to the same place, like a server, maybe it's a work scenario, maybe all of these employees permanently need to work in a remote desktop connection where they're effectively working somewhere else. There's lots of benefits to that. So if that is the situation, you can go and click on this little button here that says show options. And you can go to something like local resources. That's a nice little tab. And if I want, I can go click here on settings where it allows audio to play either on this computer, which I'm on right now, or at the remote machine. Now, if I'm working somewhere else via remote desktop, you know, so if I'm using remote desktop, I'm technically working somewhere else. And if I were to go and open something there, maybe it's a web browser, maybe I'm on YouTube like you guys are right now at the moment. If I was to go and open a YouTube video there, maybe it's a new music video that just got released and I was to try and listen to this music video, where's the sound gonna play? By default, it's probably gonna go and play on that machine. Not that it's got speakers necessarily, but that's where the sound's gonna play. You're not gonna hear anything on your side because you're on the remote side. So to get it to play on your side, if you look at the screen, you need to make sure it's on the one that says play on this computer, not on the remote computer. So you need to go and fill all those settings. Mic-wise as well, if you've got a mic on your side that you would like to use, you can say record from this computer. You'll notice there's not an option that says record from a remote computer because that would technically be a form of hacking, I think. So pretty clever from Microsoft's side, I must say. You know, I'm going to give them some credit there. That was actually pretty clever. Uh, some other resources you can effectively pull through with you as well is if you go look at this print test. If I go to more here, you can even go and pull some hard drives through the session with you. Bear in mind, you're doing this over the network. So if you're going to be connecting to a remote machine where you would normally see one hard drive there, you might see more than one there. And if you're going to go and access something that's on your local machine's hard drive, there may or may not be a delay depending on how big the file is because it's technically trying to pull it through the network is what it's trying to do there. So it's kind of like downloading to a certain extent. Um, especially if you're going to be doing this over an internet connection, then it kind of is downloading to a certain extent. Then there might really be a delay there. So that's effectively Remote Desktop, guys. If you'd like to know more about it, please drop me a comment, give me a like, and subscribe. See you guys next time.